Deja vu is an interesting phenomenon. In this case, we continuously hear a repeated point. Stores are closing down. We have looked into the misinformation that e-commerce is solely responsible for this situation and the data stands the test of time. What is most unusual is that most people can't really pay attention long enough to figure out the basic factors in which they are surrounded. Viewer retention gets worse every second. Patience is thin. And yet, when it comes to a crisis scenario, all people will be able to do is cry and beg for help. Good luck with that. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. If you have been watching the Money GPS for a while, you know what this is all about. I bring you the data directly from the source. I give you everything I possibly can and I put it together piece by piece into these videos, which I try to keep around the 10 minute mark. Most people, they go out there, they turn the TV on, they put it on their favorite program. Maybe it's 7 p.m. They're watching the news. Whatever that one individual show is providing them, that's all they're going to know. Or they look in their Apple News on their phone. They get four articles a day. They usually just skim the headlines. That's all they're going to know. Maybe some people get the morning paper. They look at a few headlines. They see what's on the front. They look into a couple pages and then they check the sports section and they move on. For most people, they are not learning anything of any relevance because if you're not digging into the deeper layers, at least one layer deep, you are simply unaware of what's going on. But you, you you and you, you are the ones who are willing to take the time to download this knowledge into your mind and I commend your efforts. Today I'm going to show you what's happening in the real economy. I'm going to pull from the different sources. I'm going to show you what you need to know. Let's get into it right away. Apparel retailer Forever 21 files for bankruptcy. Now, we did expect this to happen, not just because it's a retailer and they seem to all be going out of business. However, this news came up recently and they said that this was most likely going to occur. I just wanted to note the fact that Forever 21 has requested approval to close up to 178 US stores. This company, I believe it said, had just over 800 stores globally and we will see the fact that this company here will do what all of the other ones have done they close 178 now and then things get worse and it's 278 and it's 378 and then you see the recession come in and of course they start to close more and more and more and just like so many others they'll have to shut the doors the problem with this and the others I'll show you in just a second is that real people are a affected by this. doesn't matter about the corporation of Forever 21. Nobody has to necessarily care about this faceless organization and the CEO's bonus. And if they're going to have to give up the personal driver and tailor, that's not what I care about. What I'm looking at here is individuals who are losing work and then they can't necessarily go anywhere else simply because more and more retailers are shutting their doors. Okay, so there is an abundance of people applying for these jobs and there's not necessarily enough room to fill them. People take the jobs and what's going on right now? We see individuals taking on two and three jobs. They're at minimum wage. They're temporary jobs. They're whatever they can get. The numbers are completely skewed and you're not going to necessarily get everything you want simply by looking at, let's say, the U3 unemployment rate. We've gone into that many times before. I've got an issue right now with the retail sector and I've covered it so many times before, but those are just a few points that I wanted to make. Macy's is closing its landmark downtown Seattle store in February. This happens to be just one of them. We could see this with so many. Imagine a company like this. You go in there. It's beautiful on the inside. You see people shopping like crazy. You look around and it seems to be doing well. However, there are many factors here. Number one, on the consumer end, people are buying everything with debt. They're getting the credit card that's provided by the company at these big box stores, or perhaps they are using their credit cards, they're using their personal line of credits, anything they can to be able to buy the things that they don't need. That's one factor. But look at it on a different level from the corporation. Number one, rents are way, way, way too high. Real estate costs in general are extremely high. You look at the energy prices that they're paying to keep up with these buildings. It's so incredibly expensive. Then you have, of course, problems with management, problems with employees. There's so many different layers to this, and we can see one 
one after the other shutting their doors, okay? There are many reasons for each individual situation. Underlying all of this is an economic problem and that isn't going to be fixed anytime soon. Pier 1 Imports is still shrinking. Sales declined more than 14% this summer while it posted $100 million second quarter loss after cutting prices to sell off the slow moving merchandise. We've seen this at so many different retailers, so many different businesses that are basically creating these fire sales to get the inventory moving. This particular company has 951 stores and it looks like they've already closed 70 locations this year. So there's 951 and perhaps we will see all of these go extinct. In that case here, we've got a lot of people looking for other jobs. This isn't good at all. As always, I like to give you the information directly from the source. I give you all the data that you need. Anytime you see something at the Money GPS, you can always go down into the description under where it says sources used in this video. There are links for everything there. Take a look at coresite.com on a regular basis, okay? Because I'm not going to necessarily cover this every single report they provide, but I do like to cover it as often as I possibly can because it is factual and there is no way to deny what's going on. We have looked into this so many times before. I have done a breakdown of exactly what factors create the mess that we're in. But regardless, take a look at this now. US retailers have announced 8567 store closures and 3506 store openings. This is a growing divide that of course cannot be fixed by central bank intervention, can't be fixed by allowing mortgages to go extend further and further, making housing rules really easy to for people to get in, all of these reserve requirements at banks getting more relaxed. These type of things do not do anything except expand the bubble. And sure, you might be able to prolong something from occurring, but in fact, you're just making the inevitable much, much worse. All of the problems that we are experiencing today will not be resolved by the actions that are being taken by those in control. It is truly unfortunate that they are only trying to make things worse. That's a whole different topic. If you want to check this out, go to coresite.com and you will be able to see the weekly reports that they do. And you get this snapshot here for free. So definitely just take a look at that on occasion. Okay, now switching gears. I always find this funny and I do bring it up, but this is a good screenshot that kind of encompasses what I've talked about so many times before. Look on the screen here and you can see things that are, in my opinion, unusual. However, the frequency at which these occur seems to be rather curious. Stocks rally and trade optimism being the reason on so many different days. This right here is a example after example after example. Isn't that funny? That trade optimism, which there, by the way, is there is none at all. If you look at what has happened over the last, let's say, year and a half, there has been nothing optimistic about the trade issues going on between China and the US. If you've actually been looking at what is truly there, what is actually happening, not just, oh, he said this and that guy said that, unconfirmed sources said this. From the actual information we have, things are are worse now than they were last year. So let's get serious with it. What we are seeing is a true manipulation and that's fine for some people who are willing to sell on the perfect day, on the absolute peak at what they believe is the very tippy top. But for 99.999% of people, they are deluding themselves. China on Monday released a closely watched indicator on its manufacturing activity. Their PMI was 49.8 in September. This is yet again a contraction. I've been showing you the PMIs for different countries. I've shown you the JP Morgan global PMI. All of these are moving either towards contraction or already there. Now that is truly something to worry about because it's a real economic indicator, especially when we see this on a global 
global level, on a global scale, things are getting worse and it is impossible to deny the data when it's been going on for so long. Many of these statistics are showing that same trend since the beginning of 2018. We are going towards two years of this and yet the mainstream media is unwilling to admit the weakness. They are suggesting, well, you know, maybe there's a problem next year. All you're focusing on is the stock market and why? Because you have all of these different fund companies, because all of those advertisements which keep your business running don't want to see the information like this. And of course, they brush it off always brushing it off. I understand why, but if you're into that info, clearly we're not on the same page. Chinese US home buying to hit an eight year low, says leading property site. That should be no surprise to anybody. The issues that are going on right now between the US and China are very obvious. They're very out in the open. Those in China are worried about what's happening between the two and they're kind of just stepping back from it all and they're seeing where it goes. If they see real optimism, a trade deal happens, even in a limited form, which is something I've talked about many, many, many times that of course would start to change things. But we don't have that. In fact, things are worse now than they ever were since this whole trade battle began. Fed's quarrels says the economy is solid despite uncertainty around U.S. trade policy. Sounds a lot like what Jerome Powell said, the FOMC meetings, the statements, they say the exact same thing. Everything is good, especially in the U.S. However, we got some issues that might be a problem, but they exist outside the borders. Nothing to worry about. Growth is solid in the U.S. Economy is looking great. We're just going to decrease interest rates multiple times here and we're going to have to deal with this whole repo situation and of course we expanded our balance sheets that information is public and potentially start QE4 but that remains to be seen so don't worry about it everything is solid risk off flows resume. If you look at what has happened, I mean, most people do not believe this information. If you see the EPFR, they provide this data and you can see it for yourself. Global equities are in the negative. In fact, it shows you here minus $200 billion worth. At the very top, the yellow line, $286 billion is going into corporate debt and emerging market debt. Further down here, you can see $45 billion for global government bonds. So we know what's happening. The world is definitely changing. This isn't 2017 anymore. All of these big fund companies have readjusted their portfolios. The average seven share of Amazon type investor is looking at it saying, look, in this time frame, I've been buying seven shares of Amazon. So clearly this information isn't true. Fake news. That's what I keep hearing, but it's completely senseless because the data is right there. All I'm doing is reading from the actual data. But of course, I understand understand where they're coming from because it hurts. The truth certainly does hurt. Most people can't handle it. Secular growth stocks are underperforming defensive stocks, and you can see the secular growth stocks relative to defensive stocks. This happens on occasion, and right now the recession risk is rising. Whenever there are concerns, we see the changes to these fund companies. We can track this coming from different sources, looking at different pieces of data. Ultimately, it doesn't tell you that there's going to be a recession tomorrow. It doesn't tell you that there's going to be a crash in the stock market, but what it does give you some insight into is where the money is going to and from. And that's what I cover here on the channel. And as a result, this is something that I have seen increasing in frequency, increasing in support, and I have watched so many people pushing this globally. Really, it's happening everywhere. Support for Universal Basic Income, UBI, is on the rise, according to a new Hill-Harris-X poll released on Wednesday. The nationwide survey found that 49% of registered voters are in favor of a government-issued basic living stipend. And you can look at the chart there just to give you an idea of how this has persisted and actually increased within this period of time from February to September. Now, with all of these different surveys, you're getting a 
limited amount of people. But if you just see all of the dots and connect them, many, many people are going in this direction. And that tells me that people are having a tough time with their finances. People in the top, let's say 10%, I don't think that they're in favor of this. Perhaps even the top 20% aren't in favor of this. But for those people who are right at the edge, they are unable to make ends meet should they lose their job, should there be some sort of crisis in their lives, they're going to be in big trouble. And perhaps these are the ones who are in favor of this particular program. Now, it might be from the US, Canada, Europe, Australia, wherever it is, but I've been seeing it more and more and more. As always, if you want to track the progress of what's happening with the layoffs, bankruptcies, and the closings, check out dailyjobcuts.com, a great resource I check into regularly. I'm going to end the video there. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do so, you are supporting this channel. Thank you very much. If you want to build a business, if you want to learn how to make money for yourself that is completely passive, you can check out the Amazon GPS. It is a free e-course that I made to teach you step by step how to do it. The Amazon GPS.com. If you want the financial education that was not taught to you during your school term, then all you got to do is read these two books and you're going to get that foundation, the history, the asset classes, everything you need to know. Check it out in the link in the description. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. Hang on, wait, wait. Have you seen this video? I think it is truly very important. Definitely click on it and I'll see you over there.